this function in the body. If your te teeth do not fit correctly to the bottom teeth, um, if the top and bottom teeth don't fit perfectly, this is known as centric occlusion, which means that the jaw has to compensate by shifting and it may be a sliding or hit and slide effect of the jaw where it may hit the top or bottom and slide incorrectly to try to adjust to poor positioning of the teeth. Hence why you see some people that get uh, teeth taken out because there's crowding of the teeth or they may have braces. Now, if the jaw doesn't sit properly, it can alter the relationship of everything lower down, such as you can have problems with your neck muscles and also problems with your shoulder muscles because those two are connected to the neck. So as an example, if you visualize this, if your jaw, the bottom jaw that is, if it slides to your left side every single time you are trying to eat or talk, if it slides to your left, that means the muscles below it and below the neck, such as the levator scapula and deltoid muscles, will become facilitated, which means they work too hard, or tight. And then, because of this, the muscles on the opposite side, on the right-hand side, away from the jaw shifting to the left, will become very long. So you may have tension in the left side and looseness in the right side of your neck, which can create postural problems, which may be seen as a higher left shoulder and a lower right shoulder. So, this is just one of the possible problems that can happen with a misaligned jaw through poor mastication. Now remember, chewing your food is so important. It's a survival reflex because if you can't chew your food, you die. So as far as the brain is concerned, you need to breathe to survive. And then second to that, you need to be able to chew and eat your food, digest it to feed the cells and muscles, organs, tissues to survive. Oftentimes you have people that have uh, severe shoulder or neck pain and they go to a therapist to have a massage for their shoulder or neck pain but invariably the shoulder and neck pain are being transmitted because of a problem higher up in the chain with the jaw so it's important to have the jaw correctly aligned through either getting TMJ work or working with a top level um, check practitioner who understands the correction of the jaw and its relationship to the chain or the totem pole. The next system in the chain. This system, the third system, is um, what we call the visual system. Now the visual system is so important because if you cannot see, you cannot hunt for food, so you wouldn't be able to chew it anyway because you couldn't hunt for it. So it's a very important system in the body. Now, just talking about vision, if your eyes are not level with the horizon, that means there is some form of postural adaptation to try to correct the eyes being level because the better balanced your eyes are, the more level they are, the better your balance, which is also a survival reflex because if you fall over and hurt yourself, you could die. And also, if you cannot see correctly or a perfect level, you have less opportunity to be able to hunt and find food. So it's a very important system in the body. Now, most people know that they have a dominant eye. Now think about when you take or took photographs back in the days, 10, 15 years ago, when everybody was using the olden day cameras, we had to look into the um, camera eye to actually see where you were taking the photograph. Now, if you recall that, you'd recall that you always gravitated to one eye, whether it was your right eye or your left eye. You always gravitated to one eye. Same thing today, if you look, if someone knocks your door and you look through the keyhole, you always use one eye. Think about it. Next time you do it, you'll note, you'll note, you always gravitate to one eye. So pretty much everybody has one eye stronger than the other. The problem occurs when one eye is dramatically stronger than the other. Now, as was found, Back in 1915, with Lloyd Mills and C. L. Lohman, who studied eyes, 
Back in 1915, they found in their report that one in four people had one eye at least 25% or more stronger than the other eye. And that this was attribute this or this would affect or cause postural problems. Now, just to give you a visual understanding of this, if you were to imagine yourself with one eye dramatically stronger than the other, what would happen is your head would turn or rotate towards the stronger eye. So if you did that, if you actually were to stand right now and actually do this, turn your head to your left so that your right eye is the eye you use mostly and you did that for a long period of time what would happen is in order for your body to right itself or correct itself into a better position your shoulders would rotate counter to the direction that your head rotated so in other words if your head turned to your left to allow you to use your stronger right eye your shoulders would try to counter rotate to the right to try to balance you to center and then your hips would go opposite to your shoulders your knees would go opposite to your hips and your feet would go opposite to your knees so you'd have many postural adaptations through the body and there have also been tests and assessments and I've even seen this with my clients where somebody has a stronger eye and because of that, they have so much twist or torque in their lower body through their back that they have back problems. And beforehand, they may go to a massage therapist to work on their back. But that was only a symptom. The cause, or the effect, I should say, is the back pain. But the cause, or the problem, is one stronger eye. So you would need to get this corrected, balanced out through eye exercises and jaw exercises and breathing exercises and postural correction to balance the chain. So we know vision is very important for balance because 72% of your vision is through your eyes. So try standing on one leg with your eyes open. Note how comfortable you are or uncomfortable you are and then do the same thing with your eyes closed. What you'll note whether you can achieve it or not is there's a significant greater demand on the body when your eyes are closed. What you'll note is your body starts to shake a little bit more because your nervous system is really challenged. So vision is a very important system of the body. The fourth system in the chain is the auditory or vestibular system. Back in survival times, if you could not hear out of one ear and somebody approached you, let's say you couldn't hear out of your left ear, and somebody approached you from the left, you would most likely die simply because of the fact you couldn't hear them. And it's the same thing today. If you were crossing a road and the cars were coming from your left and somebody tried to beep you from your left and you had problems hearing out of your left ear, chances are you probably would not realize the car was upon you if you were just basing it on your ability to hear. So we know that hearing is important. Also, athletes will tell you the same thing when it comes to their equilibrium. The fluid in their ears, if it's messed up or affected in any way, it affects your balance and your equilibrium, and thus you can fall over. And again, falling is dangerous to the body, so it's a high control system in the chain. The ear detects ectoroceptive sound, and what that basically relates to or means is the same way how if you had a stronger eye, you would have a postural adaptation. The same thing if you had a um, more dominant ear or if you didn't hear properly out of one side. So again, as another example, if you couldn't hear out of your left ear properly or you were 20% deaf in your left ear, your head would rotate to the right ear, turning the head towards the right ear so that you would hear through that right ear. And that is a postural habit that you would constantly do because you'd be constantly trying to hear people and your body would adapt the same way we spoke about um, with vision your shoulders would counter rotate and so on so we know that hearing or lack of it will create postural adaptations that can cause symptoms or effects in the, in the form of pain or joint problems throughout the body 
the fifth system uh, we call the upper cervical spine or in simple terms the neck now this system is so important we know if somebody breaks their neck they could die or they could be paralyzed now a lot of this is because